Hello uh, and welcome to this uh, third experiment that we are going to do under the speech part of the lab course. Okay? So, first four weeks you would have done on the text part, the natural language processing and the second uh, set of four weeks we are going to deal with speech based applications. Okay? So, the entire idea here is that speech, you know, our, you know, uh, signal that comes out of our mouth is what we are going to use to do some interesting things. Okay? Unlike the previous text part where you know it was text that was editable text that was available uh, on the computer or on the internet that you are using to do lots of wonderful things, but now you are going to be actually doing something with the speech part of it. So, the first two experiments that you did was what is called the language identification. So, given the speech signal, can I identify what language it is? So, I, I gave you an example that when we talk about in India, right? So, if I am you know calling a call center, some customer service, I might want to speak in Hindi, I won't, might want to speak in Telugu or Tamil because that is comfortable for me. And therefore, if I do not know the, you know, uh, how to press 1, 2, I do not know the reading skills and so on, it will be very difficult for, you know, an automated system to say press 1 for Hindi, press 2 for Tamil, press 3 for English, press 27 for Manipuri, you know, it is difficult. Okay? And therefore, if I, as I speak, if you can recognize my language and then give the correct, you know, uh, you know transfer to the correct agent, that will be very good. Then we saw what is called speaker diarization, here the idea is that when I am speaking or I am having a meeting, there are several speakers and you do not uh, want one big transcription without knowing who said what right, and when. right? And therefore, the speaker diarization, problem is that we want to segment the audio itself into different speakers that are present in that particular meeting. And if I can segment it, then I can also do the third part which I will talk about today, which is the transcription that is convert what I am saying to text. Okay? That is called automatic speech recognition or speech to text problem. And previously when we did speaker diarization derivation, the idea was that we can actually get outputs that show uh, you know speaker wise like a conversation, a minutes of the meeting and so on. Okay? But there it, I was only worried about identifying in the audio who spoke when. Okay? But here I am going to be interested in saying, finding out who said what, what was said, what was the text, corresponding text that was you know spoken. Okay? So, we are going to talk about automatic speech recognition. Okay? So, this is what we are going to talk about. This is also known commonly as ASR or speech to text. Okay. So, what is the goal of ASR? The goal of ASR is one black box okay, which takes my input signal, which is a speech signal. right? So, this is a speech signal. I am going to record it on my microphone and then convert it to an electrical signal which will look like this. Okay? I give this electrical signal to a computer, but now before computers can handle only digital data. So, we are going to do analog you know, convert to digital conversion by something called sampling and quantization. So, you get a sequence of numbers that come. This is given to a very powerful black box, a model. This can be a statistical model like HMM, GMM or in today's world, it can be a powerful model like a neural network. We will be dealing mostly with neural network in this lab exercise and out will come a, a sentence like this, okay? an editable text like this. Okay? So, this will be an editable text okay? and then you can do some wonderful things with the text. right? So, the whole idea is if I am calling a call center by looking at what I am asking, whether it is you know I am asking for accounts information, balance information, then the in it is clear that the software will look at the words like keywords like uh, balance, account and then uh, you know immediately send it to that department and fetch information and maybe you can automate the whole thing so that even no human is involved. right? Or I might be complaining that you know I, I am not getting a proper you know service and therefore something has to be done or you know I can do various kinds of things with this. right? So, this is the basic idea. This is also called transcription of speech. Okay? So, I am transcribing the spoken 
or the speech signal into words okay and so this is the basic idea in speech recognition okay so here we are going from one speech language to the text in that same speech language so i will have english as my speech output here and then the asr will give an output in english if i have a, a sentence in um, hindi right i might need a different ASR model, this could be an Hindi model, which will then give me uh, aap kaise hain or something. Okay? So, this is, uh, um, you know, as I said, my Hindi is not very good. So, you know, please, uh, you know, you know, I apologize if there are mistakes, but basically some Devanagari script will come out. Okay? So, this is the basic idea that we will be working on today. Okay. So, why is speech recognition so difficult? Okay. So, the basic idea why speech recognition is difficult is that we have every speaker when I or even the same person when he speaks the same sentence again and again, we actually do not get the same signal. Okay. The signal will keep changing and therefore, the system or the computer or the model has to recognize that all these differences are there, but still I am saying the same thing. Okay. So, there is lot of variability in the speech signal and therefore, it is difficult for a machine learning algorithm to actually get very good outputs. Okay. And now, the, over the last 3, 4 years, we have really come up with very good networks which have you know uh, push the state of the art and we get performances that are almost competing with humans okay but the easiest way to understand why it is so difficult is to un, uh, you know uh, draw an analogy so here we are talking about speech recognition okay but i can also have an analogous task which i will call as handwriting recognition okay So, in handwriting recognition, the basic idea is I am going to be having some handwriting, some handwritten sentence, okay, something like this and I pass it through the handwriting system, okay. So, handwriting recognition system and it is going to give me an editable text which will be I am going to Bangalore. Okay. So, this is the basic idea in handwriting recognition. Now, you as a human can understand that handwriting is not an easy task. Okay. Why is it not an easy task? Because everybody writes in a slightly different way. So, somebody might write like this. Okay. So, this is also the sentence I am going to Bangalore, but you can see that the handwriting is quite different. Okay. And so, you the system, this handwriting system, handwriting recognition system okay, has to actually do this task in a more uh, you know uh, robust way that all these different handwritings from different users, they all give me the same output with very little errors. They, these are all automatic systems, they will make some errors. Okay. The question is how good is the system so that my errors are minimized. So, one of the things that we see here is that there is variability across different different humans. Okay. So, every human writes it in a slightly different way. Okay. Even the same human, if he writes the sentence again, there will be some small differences. Okay. You will not get, you can never re replicate. So, even if I write it like this, I am going to do it like this, I am not going to be exactly re replicating this. So, this might be the same sp uh, human, but when I write it twice, I might write it slightly different. Okay. It is very difficult for us to, uh, you know, exactly get the same strokes in the handwriting. Okay. So, this is therefore, there is a lot of variability and so we have to understand that the variability is there across uh, humans and I have to be able to understand this variability and be sort of invariant to that variability, right, to 
depending on the language, I need different systems, right? Because uh, so, uh, why do I need so? How do I? Um, how am I going to automate this handwriting uh, recognition system? The way we do the handwriting recognition system. So the basic idea. Let me rep uh, just give you an idea. Is that we identify? So the way handwriting recognition system, right? is going to be or automatic handwriting recognition okay like automatic speech recognition is basically going to look at the strokes that i make with the pen or pencil or whatever it is so it is going to kind of look at the strokes that i am making and try to identify the individual character that is there in that language okay so how many characters are there in in english let us say only the characters there are 26 english alpha characters or alphabets right so i am going to look at a then try to classify it into one of these 25 26 characters right and so from this stroke i will get some feature right which basically says this looks like a so i have to train the system to recognize this A. Similarly, I will recognize the system M from the system that it looks like M. So, this could look like you know sometimes I will make a mistake even though this looks like G maybe it got confused with Q. So, there is an error that I can be introducing right. So, it can look like the alphabet Q right. So, this is something that I might be having right and uh, then I will probably recognize the other thing. Okay. So, this is the way that the system will recognize character by character. So, basically from the image, so the process is I do some image processing, right. First, I take the image of the handwritten part, then find the pencils or pen strokes, from that identify the uh, different characters and make the sentence. Okay. Then, you are going to apply on top of this I am coing, right. You know in English language there is no word like coing, right. You know it is going to be going. So, then we apply what is called a language coing and then we apply a language model which basically says what is the probability of each of these words occurring and then the probability of the entire sequence of words itself occurring and then it will correct and put it as I am going. Okay. So, there is also a language model that can come into the picture. Okay. So, this is the basic idea in how an automatic handwriting recognition system will work. Okay. In speech, it is exactly the same except there are some more difficulties. Okay. So, I am given the waveform. Okay. In speech, also there will be variability across humans for same spoken sentence. Okay, and you can see the analogy. So, like how there is same speaker itself, I, I cannot repeat. And then different speaker or different uh, hand uh, handwriting person, the handwriting looks very difficult, different similarly while speaking also they are very, very different. Okay. So, speech is basically this task and then I am going to pass it through an automatic speech recognition system and there I want the output to be an editable text. Okay. Now, in, in, in handwriting recognition, the principle that I used was I looked at the individual things and did some image processing and found out the characters. Okay. So, these are the characters that I identify. In speech, fortunately, also how do we do speech recognition?
we take speech signal, we identify like characters, we also have in speech fortunately units that are unique for each language. So, we have basic spoken units the handwriting is these are called characters or alphabets. these are called phonemes okay okay so therefore like how i am recognizing here characters okay here i am going to recognize phonemes so in handwriting characters will be recognized in speech phonemes will be recognized so the phonemes are the basic units for speech uh, or any spoken aspect. So, if I am saying the sentence you know like and or the word and ok. So, this is the word ok. The spoken the written word will be and like this and the spoken word and will be like this. From this we will get the written a and d uh, sorry the editable a and d okay the text in in speech what we do is we have the spoken a uh, okay m mm and d okay so what does this mean this is the way i speak so the phonetic part of it comes okay so this is an a and this is a sound n okay sound unit for n this is a sound unit for d Okay, and this is a sound unit for uh, or the phonemes. These are the phonemes. Okay, and then we map these phonemes to the to the written alphabet. So this is called a lexicon. Okay. So, here I got directly the editable units because this is the character that is there and I am recognizing the character in that language. Here I recognize the phonemes and from phonemes I basically get to the uh, uh, mapping of the phoneme to the word. Okay. So, so this is the basic idea and then I will again have I can make some mistake in the phoneme. So, I can have the phoneme I um, go o e g right this is the way the phonemes are for i am going okay so this is the first one is the sound i a m g o m m g okay maybe i made a mistake like last time here okay so i might be making a mistake like here instead of this it can be the sound Going okay, so instead of k, I put instead of g, I put k okay. So again, then I am going to use the language model to help me improve okay. So then I will use the language model to tell me that this is not possible okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm.